Hello. Uh, we'll be talking today about cross products um, and why we care <laughs> as physicists. It's a, and we care because um, one of the most fundamental relationships we have is that if you sum all the torques around the same axis, you are going to change the angular momentum in the same direction as the torque, and the angular momentum L is going to be rotational. There is this um, definition of torque which says, uh, that's a tough thing to make up for, uh, we'll go over here, torque is equal to R cross F, and that's just torque about an axis and the R here now is about the same axis. And we will see that the angular momentum in general about that same axis is going to be R about that same axis crossed into the total momentum of the system. So this mathematical construct of of um, the cross product comes in extremely handy for us. And it is all, well, one way of doing a cross product, I'm going to show you. If you are comfortable mathematically with the cross product doing determinants or um, doing the right-hand rule and trying to figure it out, whatever method you have, you can use. But let me show you the method that I think works best. So we'll do the classic. Um, vector C is equal to vector A crossed into vector B. What we're really saying is that A sub X I hat um, plus a y uh, j hat. You're going to cross that into um, b x i hat plus b y j hat. We can uh, then use FOIL and all of this, and I get AX, BX, I hat crossed into I hat. I get AX, BY, I hat crossed into J hat. Then I get... Um, in a room, so then I'm going to get a y b x is j hat cross i hat, and then finally um, a y b y is going to be i hat. Oops, sorry, j hat cross j hat. <clears throat> In order to work out the cross products, what we invent is um, something that's worth noting. Um, so let's take a section of this screen. And what I want to build is the um, is the circle that's going to make cross products easy. So all I have to remember is, oops, to turn off the highlighter.
All you have to remember is we go from X crossed into Y. crossed into Z goes back to X. So, and it can be X, Y, Z, it can be I, J, K, um, whatever notation you're using, the important part here is going to be the result. So, for example, if we do... Um, I hat cross I hat, the first um, cross product we encounter in our example, we start at um, we start at x. Oh, that's abysmal. is we start at x, because that's the first term, we go around, um, then we hit the second term, which is the same, so we're kind of stuck right there. We don't go anywhere. So, I hat cross I hat equals zero. All right, let's work the uh, next example. That was I hat cross J hat. And that's going to equal us starting at x, or the i hat, and we move towards j, and j exists. So we go to y, we follow the circle this way, and we land up at z, <clears throat> which means the result of i cross j is just going to be k hat. Lousy K, drawing, uh, I know you can do better. Let's do the next term that comes up. This was um, J hat cross I hat. And you'd think having all these years of mathematics, that this would automatically be K. But we need to be careful because we start at Y. Oops, that was meant to be red. One more second. There you go. We start at Y. We go against the arrows to get to X. Then we start at X and we can move towards Z, again, in the wrong direction. So J cross I is equal to negative because we were moving against the direction of the um, circle we drew in the box. And we get a negative K hat. So when it comes to cross products, um, the associative principle of algebra doesn't work. AB is not equal to BA. The last equation we have, which was J hat cross J hat, that's going to be done by uh, again, we're going to start J hat Um, which is y, 
so we're there, and we're going to head towards the uh, Y. So we don't go anywhere in this circle. So again, that's zero. For completeness, we'll um, apply these conditions to the above equation. I cross I, that's zero because of the cross product. J cross Z, J is zero. And we know I cross J just gives us a K hat. And um, J cross I is a minus K hat. So that we just found some zeros, which is exciting. Always good to get the zeros. So when I look at my C vector now, it's just going to be composed of AX BY minus BYAX. All of these in the K hat direction. Okay, um, one of the things that we could bump into is, um, let's just keep working a couple of quick, easy examples around this. What happens if I have, um, eh, let's go back to one of the ones we just did. Uh, I hat cross K hat. The important thing to notice is the order of multiplication of the cross product it matters. So when I do R cross F to compute my torque, this is not the same as F cross R. So our torque or equation in this case is defined specifically as R cross F. It has to be in that order. This was not a constraint of the dot product, but it is a con constraint of the cross product. Um, okay, so let's say we wind up with, um, uh, the vector D is equal to the vector A cross minus B. So we have two choices here. One is to um, pull the minus sign out because it's just a scalar, it's just a number, uh, out to the front. So we get minus A cross B. And that would allow us to do B cross A. Or we can leave the minus sign with B and um, do what we would traditionally do when we apply FOIL and just make sure that every subproduct of A um, had, uh, sorry, a B had that minus sign carried with it. But the trick of flipping them because you have something negative is worthwhile to do. Uh, let's see. Um, Okay, I think I've covered everything I wanted to say about cross products. Um, we will continue to use the circle that is in the box and 
whenever we do cross products for problems to show you how it works and to give you more practice with it. So that's the end of cross products.